For 12 years you've been asking, who is John Galt? This is John Galt speaking. I am the man who loves his life. I am the man who does not sacrifice his love or his values. I am the man who has deprived you of its victims and thus has destroyed your world. And if you wish to know why you are perishing, you who dread knowledge, I am the man who will not tell you. The chief engineer was the only one able to move. He ran to the television set and struggled frantically with the cloud. The screen remained empty. The speaker had not chosen to be seen. Only his voice filled the airways of the country, of the world. The chief engineer, sounding as if he were speaking here in this room, not to a group, but to one man. It was not the tone of addressing a meeting, but the tone of addressing a mind. You have heard it said that this is an age of moral crisis. You have yourself half in fear, half in hope that the words have no meaning. You have cried the man's sins are destroying the world, and you have cursed human nature for its own words to practice the virtues of demand. Since the virtue of you consists of sacrifice, you have made more sacrifices every successive disaster. In this name of return to morality, you have sacrificed all evils which you. Okay, I know that evening shift has had some complaint. We have been hearing your complaints. We do, uh, we understand that there are reasons that numbers are down, and some of those reasons are things outside of our control. Uh, I want, that's why I want everybody to focus on the things we can control. We understand that if a load of product has been bitten in half or melted into a pile of slag or crushed into a giant dinosaur footprint, all right, we understand that wasn't anybody's fault, but it is a problem that we have still have to work for. This shit ain't OSHA approved. That's what I'm saying. I'm not working like this. This is... This is ridiculous. We get yelled at and chewed out for setting up a ladder that's too close to the edge of the building. But you let this happen. But I'm calling OSHA in here right now. <laughs> it's about what we can control and what we cannot control. The ladder, that's something that is set up by our people based on our specs. That has no your decisions designed. That's about liability. That has to be up to code. We can't control the weather. We can't control the earthquake. And we can't control when the giant monsters come onto the site. We have... Here's a code for you. I ain't working like this. It's not safe. Dave died. <laughs> Dave was wearing all of his proper protective gear at the time. He was near the safe zone. If it was, we took all due precautions, and due reparations have been paid to his family. The benefit situation was sorted out. We have people are losing it out there. Uh, fucking Jeff went and rolled around in radioactive waste because he thought maybe it would make him a monster and help fight Godzilla. That's how out of it we are. People are nervous. We are constantly on edge. We can't work like this. Comcast can wait. How about that? <laughs> We've promised our customers that we will take all reasonable measures in order to get these lines set up. We're Comcast, we fucking suck! Okay, so it's a sh it's it's a thread about nothing. It's but it, I mean, it's not really about nothing. It's about you know, Super Godzilla runs it's around a little bit, runs into some stuff. Just kind of what what we're doing here right now. That's what it's about. So say you walk your Godzilla up the north edge of the map. 
Wander around a lake, try and find a professor. And nothing happens. I want details, and I want them right well, now. I mean, something happens. No, no, nothing it's happens. It's just... You don't, you don't face any obstacles. You don't overcome any challenges. You don't solve any puzzles. Just nothing. Worlds are colliding! Well, you, you run into a mountain. You take a little bit of damage from that. That's something. You know, you, you do a mountain, you do a mountain forwards, backwards, you know, the, the normal stuff. That's a thing that happens. Yeah, every, Gotta watch out for mountains. electric towers. Okay, so the, the thread, though, you, you can learn about Godzilla. We can talk, like, just a casual conversation about Godzilla, like we're having right now. That could be a post in the thread. This could be a post in the thread, what we're having right now. It could be a post in the thread. Yeah, if, well, I, want I mean, and I want them right not now. really, but th this item description here, this could be a post in the People thread. Always say we could have this. Professor, he definitely well, is a poster in the thread. It's well, just being a poster in the thread doesn't mean you post George in the thread. It, Anything you, goes. No, you see, it's about Shut nothing, it though. Now. There's no characters. There's no it real plot. It, I told you the trick was bad. Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Uh, after doing Seinfeld, moved on to Watching Ellie, which was created by her husband Brad Hall, that ran from 2002 to 2003. She played Ellie, a cabaret performer, and the show is most notable for its incredible shift from season one to season two. In the first season. Watching Ellie was a single camera show that followed 22 minute segments of Ellie's life in real time. But when the second season premiered, the show had been revamped as a traditional multi camera sitcom with a live audience and a laugh track. After only six episodes in the second season, the show was cancelled. Jerry Seinfeld went into The Marriage Ref in 2010. He executive produced and occasionally participated on The Atrocious Marriage Ref, a show where comedians and celebrities watch clips of argumentative couples and give humorous advice. If you need any example why the show is awful, Madonna was asked to be a panelist. Madonna was asked to be a panelist to give advice to married couples. Jason Alexander did Listen Up. This was his second attempt at doing a sitcom after Seinfeld, and it was a series based loosely on the life of Washington, D.C. sports writer and ESPN analyst Tony Kornheiser. Though the series performed decently in ratings, critics weren't fond of the show, calling it a cheap ripoff of Everybody Loves Raymond with a less appealing lead, Jason Alexander. The series only lasted one season. Michael Richards was in the Michael Richards show. I think that's enough said about that. Brian Cranston, who played a doc, a dentist, Tim Watley, was in Godzilla 2014. I know what you were trying to do. Nobody does it better than me. I think it's a risky move using a whole Godzilla as bait. Especially in this kind of weather. Normally you'd save that for after a nice rainfall. You wouldn't wouldn't go trawling with that full big thing uh, right away. But, you know, it seems to be working out for them. The team seems to know what they're trying to do and how best to capture themselves a professor. These, and uh, it looks like a real big lunker. These cool spring mornings that really bring the professors out of hiding. They go to feast on mosquitoes and other small insects near the water's surface. This, this one we have on the line here looks to be a biologist, perhaps a biochemist, going by the coloration. We'd have to get him in closer to be sure. Mm hmm, absolutely. And the best part about that is they'll lead you really nicely onto a, onto a nice big biolante if you, if you know how to follow them, you know, because you're going for the professor, but the real reason you're going for the professor is to find, you know, the real lunkers. Those ones that you can write home about and. Well, I think, you know, every rose has its thorns. They're tougher to catch, but they pay off in the end, and, uh, I, I think, I think that's what's gonna happen here. It is a patience man's game. Slow, careful struggle. One few have the endurance for, but to those willing to invest the time,
can't summon the great Satan with a fall festival. What's the deal with that? Mm-hmm.